So we did a thing. I did something I shouldn't have done. I accidentally flashed someone and um <laughs> and so this is what happened. Hola muchachos, I'm wearing my belly band by Belly's Inc. This just kind of like sits under my belly and supports my belly and it can take a lot of pressure off of my pelvis. And then I can also wear it postpartum, which is gonna be so great because I love belly wrapping postpartum. So I had a lot of people asking about what brand this is. It's Belly's Inc. And I can link my affiliate link down below if you want to check it out or you can just head over to their website or social media. Hey, guess who's in her third trimester? Thank you. It's good to be here. <laughs> I feel like the second trimester, you're pretty much just waiting for your third trimester. Like you're waiting for things to start picking up and getting somewhere. And now, now we're getting somewhere. I'm at the point where I'm like, baby's gonna be here maybe in less than three months because I had two of my kids just after 37 weeks. My other one at 39 weeks. So I'm like, okay, it shouldn't be too long, but we'll see. I may go past my due date, who knows? But I was like, third trimester, we start getting things ready. I need to buy things for baby because I really don't have anything. <laughs> like, really not a lot of stuff going on right now. I need to continually prepare myself physically and mentally and spiritually uh, for labor and postpartum. <sighs> I'm just psyched to be here. And I was so excited to be here that I wanted to hop onto my Instagram and ask you guys to ask me questions that I can answer here. There's just so many questions people are asking and I just didn't answer them. And then I was like, hey, can you guys like ask those questions again? And you guys came through and you totally did. So thank you. I'm going to address some stuff here in today's video. If you're new here, my name is Sarah Therese. I've been married for just over six years. This is baby number four. I have a five-year-old, a three and a half-year-old, and a two-year-old. We do not know the gender of this baby, nor do we want to until birth. That's just how we've done it with all of our kids. And I am planning a home birth for the second time. I've had two hospital births, one home birth, and then we're gonna do a home birth, Lord willing, with this one too. So let's go ahead and check out your guys' questions. What made you want to give birth without pain medication? Just curious, great question. Let's just say, no matter how you give birth, you, <laughs> you are a trooper and you gave birth. C-section, you gave birth. Vaginal delivery, you gave birth. Epidural, you gave birth. As long as that baby is exiting your body somewhere, honey, you gave birth. There's like this weird thing. Like I feel like the whole natural vaginal birth, honestly, I love it. I love it. I feel like for me, it works really well, but so many people will hold that on such a high pedestal. And then when it comes to like C-sections and epidurals, they see it as like the easy way out. I don't agree with that at all. No matter how you have to do it, do it and you did it. And that is so powerful. But like personally for me, when I got pregnant with my first child, Ivy, I was like, I just want to see if I can do this without pain medication. I just want to see. I don't want gas. I don't want drugs. I don't want morphine. I don't want an epidural. I just want to see if I can do it. There's like this hippie part to me that's like, I just, I just want to try it. So really my goal was to go through labor without having anything, but also kind of being gracious to myself and seeing if there is a point where I'm like, I just can't go any further, that I'd give myself some grace and like do something. With my daughter Ivy, I didn't come to that point, nor did I with my son Calvin, or did I with my daughter Elizabeth. I just never got to a point where I felt like I couldn't keep going on. I felt like I could keep going on, keep doing it, and I didn't need pain medication. So everyone, their labor is very different. I didn't have any sort of trauma. The pain wasn't so great that I felt like I was just dying or out of control. So yeah, that was just, <laughs> that's just kind of been my labor experience. I've never really felt like I needed pain medication thus far. What is it, Ellie? Go pee on the potty. Just hold on, give me a second, I'm out of breath. How are you preparing for birth? Lots of deep set squats. Uh, even though I have pubic symphysis dysfunction, I can still squat in a certain way that opens up kind of that area and stretches through my inner thigh. I've 
done that through all my pregnancies, including while I'm in labor, and I feel like it just helps things to move along and for baby's head to stay really engaged as well. Also, for all my kids, I've taken baths that night and done like the perennial type of massage, especially this time around because with my pelvic issues, a lot of it came from having overly tight vaginal muscles that have just like taken over <laughs> and it's very painful and it affects your core and your pubic bone and pelvis. So I literally work to release them. Some people ask how I do it. It's just with my hands and I know you can actually get like vaginal muscle release like items that are like not gross or weird but it's just to release those muscles but I've been able to just comfortably do it with my hands and it's been fine. And then like spiritually and mentally like planning and prepping and all that stuff. Praying is huge. Uh, praying over your baby is huge when you feel your baby like more towards the front of your belly, like really rubbing your baby and talking to your baby. And then just in general, preparing the house and preparing the people and the little people inside the house for what is to come. All that stuff I've been working on and doing. I do wanna do a whole video talking about how I'm really preparing for labor and baby, but that's just kind of like the short end of it. What are you most concerned about regarding labor? Um, so I am watching <laughs> labor videos again because I just think they're so great to watch like on YouTube, people's labor videos. And for so many of them, these moms are pushing forever or the baby gets stuck. And I'm like, oh, that would be my huge like, oh no. I've only ever had to push for a couple minutes, if not at all. I've never had a baby get stuck or kind of stay in that area for a long time. Like they just shoot right through. And that would be the only area of concern I would have towards labor, I think especially with tighter vaginal muscles. But then at the same time, my pelvis is more open right now because of my pubic deficit spot. You know what I'm talking about? That's just something that I pray about and I'm like, please Lord, no. Please Lord, no. Have you and Kieran picked names yet? Ah. Uh... <laughs> no. Kind of. <laughs> with Ivy, she was she was set out and planned as well as kind of a boy name. And then same with Calvin, a boy name and a girl name. If Calvin was a girl, Calvin would have been Elizabeth. But Calvin was a boy, so Calvin was Calvin. And then with Elizabeth, and if you watch my labor vlog with Elizabeth, I literally say in that vlog, if this is a boy, we still have to pick a name. Oh, how beautiful your baby's gonna be. Your baby. You know, if it's a boy, we still have to figure out a name. <laughs> <laughs> like we still have to name him because I feel like after the third or even just the second kid names I don't know I don't think about them as much when it comes to the time of naming them whether baby's there or you're in labor then it's like we gotta start cracking but before then me and Karen will just randomly throw names at each other and be like do you like this do you like this do you like this we'll figure it out but there is no name at all set in stone for a boy or a girl. Has this pregnancy made you think about future pregnancies? Are you standoffish at all? Good question. I don't feel hesitant about getting pregnant again after this baby. This has been my hardest pregnancy I've ever had just because of like my gallbladder stone like pain issue and my pelvis issue and my migraines. <laughs> I feel like this has been my hardest pregnancy. Not so hard that I wouldn't do it again and not so hard that the idea of getting pregnant again is like freaky or traumatic to me. Um, I've had so much help from so many professionals and my body feels good and capable uh, to carry more children after this. So I don't feel too standoffish at the idea of future pregnancies. How's your pelvis? Never have I ever asked anyone that. <laughs> but you know what? Never have I ever talked about my pelvis so much in my whole life that I have the past like six months. So we did a thing. I did something I shouldn't have done. I accidentally flashed someone and um, <laughs> and so this is what happened. My pelvis has been doing 
significantly better since seeing my pelvic floor specialist. Huge difference. Like literally on my worst days, I'm at a two out of 10, where it used to be like eight or nine out of 10. So I'm feeling great, but then I still have to be careful with my pelvic. I still just, I need to take precautions, be proactive. So anyway, for about four days ago, me and Kieran and the kids went to this field and we're all hanging out. Kieran's taking pictures and Ivy's trying to do cartwheels and Ivy, was doing them very wrong because she's she's new to cartwheels. I'm a cartwheel queen. Like growing up, my main sources of just like activities, I feel like were monkey bars and cartwheels and I loved doing them. And I was like, firstly not thinking and <laughs> was like, hey, I'll show you how to do a cartwheel. Ivy didn't think that through. Like I, looking back, Frick, y'all, like I did not think that through. I tried my best to do a cartwheel. Um, I was wearing a dress and I did flash Kieran cause I couldn't, I couldn't bring my legs all the way up. It was a tighter fitting dress so it would have stayed with my body if I could have performed the cartwheel properly. While I was doing the cartwheel, baby flipped. Like there was this huge, like I felt, dang, like this kid, <laughs> do not, please. Don't do cartwheels in pregnancy. That's just a no. I I did a cartwheel in one of my other pregnancies feeling totally fine to get baby to flip and it did happen. So there's that for you. While I was in mid cartwheel, I felt my pelvis grind, snap, punch. Like it was like very painful. Then hear me out. Since then, I have been feeling so good. I don't know what happened to my, what's up with the sun? I don't know what happened to my pelvis during that time, but something amazing happened. Between my cartwheel, my prenatal chiropractor, and my pelvic floor specialist, my pelvis feels fantastic. Usually when I sleep, my pelvis pops and clicks. Like it is so painful, I cry out in pain. I haven't had that since my cartwheel episode. So that's how that's how my pelvis is doing. I'm thrilled. <laughs> what do contractions feel like? Is it like a period pain on crack or my body is ripping apart? I never felt like my body was being ripped apart. It was just insane stomach pain. Insane. And then with my daughter Ivy, I don't even remember having stomach pain because my back pain was so bad. I had horrible back pain and back labor with Ivy. And then with Calvin and Elizabeth, it was all through the tummy. Let me tell you, tummy labor, 10 times easier than back labor. Back labor sucks. Tummy labor, I was able to really control and work through tummy labor quite nicely. Um, I hate to say that it feels like really bad period pain because like I've never really had super bad period pain. I think it's kind of like that. It is, it's, it's the, <laughs> it leaves me speechless. Like <laughs> It is just insane intense cramping and when people told me that's what it was uh before i went into labor i was like oh i can totally take cramping uh, and then when i had belly labor i was like this is insane to me like this is beyond cramping i never felt like my body was betraying me or falling apart but that belly cramping it's it's intense it really is intense names you love I'll share with you guys some names that we won't be using, but I love them. I love the name Elliot for a boy, but I can't have Ellie, Elizabeth, and Elliot. Ellie, you know, it just doesn't work. I love the name Diane, Diana. I love the name Darcy for a boy. You could do a boy or girl, but specifically for a boy, but we have an Elizabeth, and Elizabeth and Darcy, Pride and Prejudice, you know. Would love to name my daughter Therese. And like, I know that's my middle name, Sarah Therese, but like, I just, I love the name Therese. It's so pretty. I love the meaning of Therese. My grand, what is up with his son? My grandma was named Therese. I just, I'm biased, I know, but I love those names. What's it like watching your belly keep growing? It's a privilege, guys. Having a healthy, growing baby belly is a full-on privilege. It's so fun. Uh, I love that when my belly gets bigger, it's a sign that baby is getting bigger and that I'm just progressing safely through this pregnancy. It's phenomenal. Like it is, it is so phenomenal. And I don't think you can understand like how friggin' cool this is uh, until you have one of your own. Like you have to just experience it to know just 
what it's like and what it feels like. Like, it's insane. Are the kids excited and are your three kids going to be involved in your birth? Kids are very excited. They think uh, the baby moving and hiccuping is like the coolest thing ever. I love having kids that understand pregnancy while being pregnant. I've never really experienced this before, so it's really, really cool. Um, as for them being involved in the birth, they're going to be at home with me. So my mom will come over and be with the kids while I'm in labor, so Kieran can obviously be with me, and I can obviously be <laughs> in the bathtub. But the kids are more than welcome to come see me. Uh, when I'm in labor, I'm not yelling or screaming. I'm, I feel like I'm kind of calm-ish. I'd like to be calm this time. We'll see. I like the idea of being a little more calm this time, and I think especially having the kids there would be helpful. With my last home birth, the kids were at home, but they were actually sleeping. They slept the entire time. But I would love for them to be able to come in uh, if they want to see baby being born. Like, I'm cool with that. Rank the trimesters from best to worst. Okay, third trimester is my favorite. And that's why I'm so stoked to be here. <laughs> third trimester because that's when baby's coming. That's the most exciting. I would say third trimester, yes. Uh, and then I would have to say second trimester just because like nausea's done and your belly starts growing. First trimester, you kind of want to get through it because of like miscarriage. It's a lot greater in the first trimester. Nausea, uh, that transition, you feel pregnant but you don't look pregnant. So yeah, third trimester is where it's at. Second trimester, pretty solid. First trimester, it's nice to get through it. Can we see the nursery? Does each kid have their own room? Our house is a three bedroom. So it's me and Kieran in this one and then Ivy and Elizabeth share room and then Calvin has his own room. So we don't have a nursery, <laughs> nor do I really want one. Uh, baby is going to be sleeping beside my bed in a cute little bassinet for the first bit and then when baby, whether the baby is a boy or girl, is ready to be in a crib, we'll move into Calvin's room. If it is a girl, I feel like a lot of people thought we would move it into Elizabeth and Ivy's room, but there's not enough room. So we would move it into Calvin's room and if this is a girl, we can't live in this space, this house, for as long as we would like to. We would move sooner than if this was a boy. Does that make sense? I have no idea. But anyway, <laughs> no, not doing a nursery thing or anything like that, just because we don't have the space for it. And that's totally cool. And that's an extra thing that I don't have to do. <laughs> so designing and planning a nursery. So I'm totally cool with that. Last question. Uh, birth plan. Love you, sister in Christ. <sighs> I love my sisters in Christ. Love my sisters! Okay, my birth plan. Go into labor after 37 weeks. Uh, there's some ideas that I possibly might go into labor sooner than that, just because of my very open pelvis, because I've always had kids earlier, I've never made it to my due date, I always dilate earlier, and as every kid goes on, sometimes you can have your kids sooner. That's not always the case, but sometimes it can happen. So the plan, make it past 37 weeks so I can get my home birth, and then um, I'm in the tub. Like when I get into labor, like when I realize I'm in labor, I'm in the tub until baby comes out, and that's <laughs> that's my birth plan, y'all. That's literally it, non-medicated, uh, really relaxing. We are planning on filming it. Kieran's gonna be there. My midwife will show up. My birth plan is simple, and I think one of the best and most gracious things moms can do for themselves is to create a simple birth plan uh, that can kind of stretch and move around if necessary because you never really know what's gonna happen. My goal is to have baby at home. That's that's the plan, but we'll see how that goes. Thank you guys for watching my q and I'm just like thrilled to be in my third trimester. That is so fun. Uh, baby is due August 9th, so like, yes, I want an August baby. Baby might come in July, but I'm like, please hold off till August just because I want an August baby. I think it's so cute, the idea of an August baby. <sighs> So we'll see, but thank you so much for being here and watching. Make sure you subscribe because yes, there will be a birth vlog, uh, there'll be a third trimester vlog, I think my second trimester vlog, where I vlog through my whole second trimester just went up so I can have that link down below. Preparing for my home birth and preparing my body for labor, all that stuff, it's coming. So I hope you enjoy what is to come and I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys in the next one, bye.